Teslas include a lot of great features. It's one of the things that makes their cars so desirable for so many, but there are still quite a few features lacking in their cars. Some features are standard on many cars but don't come in Teslas, while others are small features that Tesla could add via a software update. This is something Tesla commonly does, and in the past few years, they've added tons of features that customers wanted, like a blind spot camera that pops up on turn signal. However, there remain plenty that we'd love Tesla to add, so let's get into it, and a special thanks to Fantic for sponsoring a portion of this video. Throughout this video, I'll alternate between hardware and software features we want to see Tesla add for their 2023 model year vehicles. The benefit of software features is that if they add them in 2023, they'll arrive for all customers across the board for the most part, so let's start there. One of the biggest features missing in Tesla software is a bird's eye view for parking. This is something that Tesla and Elon Musk have said that they can do as part of the FSD package, utilizing the cameras and FSD computer already installed in their cars, but they still have yet to ship it. In October of 2020, Elon tweeted in response to a request for that feature, saying, quote, Vector space, bird's eye view coming with FSD. The FSD package is now $12,000 and enhanced autopilot is $6,000. So this feature wouldn't be stock, but it would be something that would make people pay up for it. I tested out the Lucid Air recently and it had a great version of this bird's eye view. Many other cars like the Ionic 5, far cheaper as well, compared to the Model Y and especially Model S or X, include this feature. So it really feels like something Tesla absolutely could do and is leaving out at this point. That's the first feature we want to see from Tesla in 2023. Next up is something that Tesla has added to the Model Y in most factories, a cargo cover. The Model Y doesn't ship with a cargo cover out of Fremont, and this is a feature that many want. It can help hide your cargo in the hatchback trunk, keep it secure in case of sudden braking, and help reduce noise from the trunk space. Some people take this out on day one and forget all about it, while others absolutely want this feature every day, but Tesla is now shipping this out of Giga Shanghai, Giga Berlin, and Giga Texas. They have yet to ship it from their main North American factory in Fremont on the Model Y from what we can tell, so we want to see these updates. Eventually they'll likely add it and they very well could do so well before 2023, but we definitely want to see it. It's great that these new factories have this, but most are still taking delivery in this area from Fremont and not getting a cargo cover. There are also a few small features like extra carpet in interior trim areas that they have added to their new factories producing the Model Y, but not Fremont yet. Hopefully they can match all of these soon. The next feature we want to see Tesla add in 2023 is AirPlay. Teslas include Bluetooth to stream audio from your phone and it works very well, making it a great audio system. However, Bluetooth quality is limited. Right now, the best way to listen to audio in a Tesla is actually using Tidal on screen and offline downloading hi-fi music, but not everyone has this or wants this. Instead, many opt for Apple Music or Spotify, and each of these are limited by Bluetooth or streaming. AirPlay is the technology that allows you to stream higher quality audio than Bluetooth and it would enable potentially lossless streaming to truly utilize the great sound systems included in each Tesla. At Jacob B1290H tweeted at Elon in May saying, quote, the speaker system in Teslas are so good, but we are limited by the quality of Bluetooth. Could we have AirPlay added? It adds the ability for lossless streaming. The hardware necessary is already there. To this, Elon responded, quote, we'll discuss this and other improvements with Tesla Audio Engineering. The new Model S and X sound system is incredible. This is a good sign for this feature, at least having a chance of coming to Teslas, but some features like that bird I view never have come to be, so we're not so sure what to expect. If the hardware is already there, we'd love to see it, but AirPlay is an Apple product, and typically Tesla doesn't play too nice with Apple and vice versa. That brings us to the next feature that many would love to have in a Tesla in 2023, Apple CarPlay. Apple CarPlay enables a lot of great features that many feel need improvement in a Tesla. It also enables some features that are missing entirely. At the same time, Android Auto can offer a similar experience for Android users, and we're seeing the integration of these systems in many models modern cars. Tesla instead opts for their own system, which sometimes is better and sometimes isn't. I'd love to see the option for these systems arrive, but realistically, I think Tesla wants to keep everything in-house. Keeping things in-house or moving things in-house has been a huge strength for them as a company. So we'd love to see them at least add options for CarPlay and Android Auto in 2023, but I'm not holding my breath. Next up is a hardware feature that Tesla could solve in two ways. Currently in North America, Tesla ships their cars with their proprietary connector. This connector is smaller than most works incredibly well and works at all Tesla superchargers. Superchargers are plentiful and there are way more available than other charging networks. However, sometimes you may find yourself wanting to use a third-party fast charger. Currently, unless those chargers have a Tesla connector, you'll be out of luck. Third-party fast chargers will use CCS and you need
need a converter to get this done, which Tesla does not currently sell in the US. In the future, Tesla wants to offer their supercharger network to other EVs, but this will get tricky because of these connectors. Elon talked about this at the FT Future of Cars conference back in May, saying, it's a little trickier in the US because we have a different connector than the rest of the industry, but we will be adding the rest of the industry connector as an option to superchargers in the US. There, it sounds like Tesla will be adding CCS options so that other EVs can use superchargers, but it makes you wonder if they'll end up just switching entirely to CCS. It is becoming the standard for other EVs and could make things easier instead of them holding onto it like Apple has done, with the iPhone still avoiding USB-C. For cars they have already shipped, we want them to offer their CCS converter in all markets from their online store. Then going forward, maybe they keep their connector and sell this converter or switch to CCS if superchargers are sporting it from then on. These options would ensure Tesla owners have every possible fast charging option. Now there's another option we want Tesla to add involving charging and we'll get there in just a minute. Before we go any further, I'd like to thank today's sponsor, Fantic. Fantic is a fast expanding brand focused on creating tech-driven solutions to real world problems. The Fantic X8 Apex is a versatile tire inflator that weighs under two pounds and comes in about the size of a soda bottle. This portable inflator is perfect for car tires and is capable of providing a maximum pressure of 150 pounds per square inch, inflating 45% faster than most devices on the market. It has a large built-in battery of 7,800 milliamp hours and recharges with its convenient USB-C port. The X8 Apex includes five smart inflation modes, which means you can set it for different tires, forget about it, and it will auto stop at full air pressure. It also includes an LED flashlight. If you're a frequent camper or road tripper, it's the perfect tool to have in case you get a flat tire. For pre-prime day, Fantic is offering huge discounts. To check out the Fantic X8 Apex for yourself in advance of prime day, click the link in the description below and use my code to get an additional discount. This deal is only up for a limited amount of time, so order soon if you're interested. For charging a Tesla, this currently works in one direction. You charge up the massive battery pack and then only drain that battery pack by using the car. However, having a massive battery is a great advantage and there are home storage options that Tesla sells. Tesla designs this so that you buy a power wall and that is for your home and then you have your car and that car battery is only ever used for the car. Other brands though are getting wise to the fact that people like using their EV battery for other uses and they're offering bi-directional charging so that your EV can function as a home backup battery when needed and power your home. For long-term use, this probably isn't the best for the vehicle battery, and you're not going to want to use it every day, but in the case of a blackout, it can be extremely helpful. During our last blackout, I had a Model S and Model 3 charged up to 80% sitting in our garage. It felt like a waste, and it would have been great to be able to use those batteries to power our home. That's a bigger feature, but something we definitely want from Tesla in 2023 if possible. The next feature we want to see from Tesla in 2023 is software-related, and something Elon Musk has talked about, cloud profiles. In a Tesla everything you change settings-wise is saved to your driver profile. That profile is linked to your key and works incredibly well, but if you get into another Tesla, upgrade to a new one, or anything else, you'll find that you have to start from scratch with all of your settings. In April of 2017, five years ago, Elon Musk said, we are going to move all info and settings to the cloud, aka server, so any Tesla you drive in the world automatically adjusts to you. Multiple articles have come out since showing Tesla is actively working on this. We've seen a feature called cloud profiles, account link, or vehicle sync, and screenshots of this have been shown multiple times, but the feature has yet to arrive in Tesla vehicles. This is something we really want to see added in 2023, and it's something that could arrive for all customers. Next is a hardware feature that many premium electric cars are now shipping with, an automatic front trunk. Tesla ships all of their cars with a rather large, usable front trunk. It provides a great amount of extra space, but you have to open it manually after releasing it, and then close it gently in a specific way. The Lucid Air, Rivian R1S, and R1 T, Hummer EV, and Ford F-150 Lightning are all now shipping with a powered front trunk. It makes the front trunk much more accessible and easy to use, and this is definitely something Tesla should add to their cars. Many customers add a third-party option here, but this is definitely something that we'd love to see be standard on Tesla vehicles, especially for the Model Y, which now starts at $66,000. Now back to software, there are a few things related to music that we want Tesla to improve on, and new features we want. For one, many want to see them add Apple Music integration. Again, this is questionable, since Tesla
Tesla and Apple typically don't play nice, but it would be very nice to have an alternative to Spotify or Tidal on screen for those who use it. That way it can be integrated on screen and not only streaming from your phone. Even without that though, the music app in a Tesla needs a lot of work. The search is very confusing and it just doesn't work as well as it should. This is where a Tesla app store could improve a lot of things by allowing developers to make great versions of their streaming apps instead of Tesla jumbling them all together into their own on-screen app. Ultimately, I'd love to see a Tesla app store in 2023, but in the meantime, I'll take improvements to the music app to make it more usable. Then in the new Tesla Model S and X, Tesla added a rear screen. This allows rear passengers to watch videos or listen to music from the rear screen, but currently the audio is global for the car. If your kid is watching a show on the rear screen, it's just heard in the entire car. Elon Musk talked about this in his interview with Tesla owners of Silicon Valley, saying that they want to fix it, quote, so that people can listen to music in the front and not get the audio blasted in front by a YouTube kid. That's the current situation in those cars and he's well aware of it. He said that, quote, there's a bunch of things like this that we need to fix, but their focus is on full self-driving. At the same time, he talked about their internet browser and called it garbage. He said, I think we have a lot of work to do with the native software in the car, really. Our web browser sucks. If you try to use the web browser in the car, it takes a long time to load and is a trash browser. It's worse than some iPads from five years ago. If you've used the web browser, you've definitely had this experience and it really just makes this pretty useless. So there are a number of features and improvements we really want Tesla to bring out in software in 2023. Hopefully they come soon. Next up is a hardware feature many would like Tesla to add, a heads up display. The Model 3 and Y include one center screen that displays everything you need. It also controls everything and with more and more features being added, it can feel a little bit jumbled on screen. A heads up display would display your relevant speed information on the windshield directly in your view instead of you needing to look to the side. The Ionic 5 along with many other modern cars has this option and it would be a great option for Tesla to add. This could help drivers to see this information and keep the clean look of the dash. Alternatively, Tesla could add a full instrument cluster display to these cars like they do in the Model S and X, but I don't imagine that happening anytime soon as well. Next up is a feature we want Tesla to add for safety. Tesla is incredibly focused on safety and every vehicle they sell comes with active safety features. These include automatic emergency braking, forward collision warning, side collision warning, obstacle aware acceleration, blind spot monitoring, and lane departure avoidance. This is all very good, but one glaring omission is rear cross traffic alert. This is a feature shipped in many modern cars, and this will help you when reversing in an area with less than ideal visibility. The car will see cross traffic coming behind you and prevent an accident in that way. Tesla has features to help you see and avoid these types of accidents, but doesn't include this automatic feature. It's unclear why they don't include it, but it's definitely something we want them to add. It would only improve safety, and we know that that is very important to them. I'd also love to see Tesla add blind spot indicators here on the side mirrors as well. For me, these help me to see that cars around me are aware I'm in their blind spot if I'm passing by. The next features we want to see from Tesla in 2023 relate to software. The full self-driving package now sells for $12,000. They just recently added the enhanced autopilot option, which essentially delivers all the same features today, but costs half the price, $6,000. It's a great improvement over only being able to pay $12,000, but $6,000 is still high for what it delivers. Many only really want auto lane change since that feature greatly improves autopilot. The rest of enhanced autopilot I've found not to be worth the price, so many customers don't pay the $6,000 and end up with none of these features. If Tesla were to offer things like auto lane change a la carte for $1,000 or $2,000, this would be awesome. Many would love this option and ultimately I think it would just result in more revenue for Tesla. At the same time, Tesla's software features and upgrades like this are locked to the vehicle. With most devices you own, if you purchase a software upgrade, you own the software. If you sell a computer or phone, you can re-download that software. But with a Tesla, if you buy full self-driving and sell your car, FSD goes with it. This just happened to me when I sold my Tesla Model Y. I paid $7,000 for FSD at the time, and now it's gone. Most buyers don't value FSD in the purchase, so it just ends up being kind of a waste. Then customers have to pay the updated $12,000 price to get it on their new Tesla. Ultimately, FSD is a big investment. You pay $6,000 on top of enhanced autopilot to get the FSD beta sometime in the future and hopefully get true full self-driving when Tesla finally delivers it. But the timeline is very unclear. I think this should be rewarded by allowing customers who buy in early and help fund this beta software to keep it and transfer it to a new vehicle. It would mean less resistance to selling a Tesla bought with FSD, less resistance to customers buying another new Tesla, and a better customer experience. I hope Tesla can change this, but again, it doesn't seem very likely. For the Tesla Model Y, this is Tesla's most popular car. That's saying a lot given how many EVs Tesla sells, but there are two features we really want them to add to this car, especially considering its price point today. A base Model Y in the US is $66,000, and many cars 
cars in that price range include luxury features like an incredibly smooth suspension and ventilated seats. Ventilated seats are included on the Model S and X today, but those cars start at $105,000. Many cars cheaper than the Model Y include ventilated seats, so that's a feature that would definitely improve that car, as those seats can get a bit sweaty in extremely hot climates. For the suspension, the ride quality in the Model Y is my biggest complaint, and many others. It's just a pretty harsh ride, and it could be far better. Tesla has been spotted many times working on an air suspension for the Model Y, and this would help significantly there, but an updated coil suspension could do the same as well. The Lucid Air rides extremely smooth and doesn't use an air suspension, so there are many options. This car is overall being utilized for average drivers, not the racetrack, so a smoother Model Y suspension is a feature we really want on the Model Y in 2023. Last up is something that's less of a feature, but an improvement for Tesla service, more service options. If I check my Tesla app right now and try to schedule Tesla service, my first available appointment is two weeks away. That's the earliest option if my car has an issue, and that's a problem. We need service availability so that when things go wrong, you can get it fixed easily. Luckily, I have seen that Tesla is working on opening up more service centers near me, and it appears that they are taking this seriously, but we'll have to see. It's a very important thing as they sell more and more cars each year. At the same time, we'd also like their prices to go down instead of up for the first time in over a year, but there are many factors here, and it will likely take some time. So those are some of the features that we would love for Tesla to add in 2023. Some of them involve software, so they could bring it out pretty easily to all customers, and others involve hardware upgrades, so it would be a bigger undertaking. Either way, these cars are very expensive, so a lot of these features would be great for them to add and would significantly increase the value of their cars. But what do you think? Did I miss a feature that you really want in a Tesla? Leave a comment below and let me know your thoughts. In the meantime, you can check out the latest Tesla news by watching my video linked up here or in the description below. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.